Next talk is gonna be Shut Up and Take My Money by Vincent Halpert. Vincent is a research associate at the Security Research Group of the Department of Computer Science at Friedrich Alexander Universität in Erlangen, Nuremberg, Germany. Typical, very long German word. His main research interests are authentication, system security, and software protection of mobile devices. This is actually Vincent's second time speaking at the Congress. Last year, his talk discussed conceptual insecurity of app-generated passwords in online banking. This year, he will discuss the practical aspects and some successful hacks that, if I recall correctly, took over entire bank accounts from users' mobile apps. With that, Vincent, over to you. Yeah, hello again, thanks for the warm welcome, and let's dive right into it because we have a tough program. Okay, first of all, online banking is something that affects us all um, because virtually everybody uses it. Um, in traditional online banking, we use two devices, one to initiate our payments and to um, log in with username and password, and another device to confirm transactions. With the rise of mobile devices, app-based confirmation procedures became popular, like, um, up, like this app there. In, uh, in the recent past, what I have been talking about last year, um, yeah, it became popular to implement those two devices in two apps. That means you only have one single device and have two apps now to authenticate um, transactions. Yeah, uh, last year I showed that this has severe conceptual drawbacks, um, but this is not the end of it. Um, there, the latest evolution in, the, um, in online banking are now one-app authentication models. I already said this last year, actually it doesn't make so much difference, so banks are no longer faking to have real two-factor um, two authentication, it's now clear that it's just one. So you do the transaction initialization inside the app and the confirmation is just another dialogue inside the app. This time, I want to talk about N26. Um, yeah, the, the shining star on the German fintech sky. And yeah, actually, this time I'm only going to be talking about technical issues. Um, and yet, it's clear that we have similar conceptual problems like with two app authentication, but I will focus on technical issues because we have enough of this there. Briefly about N26. Um, N26 is a Berlin-based mobile-first fintech and it plans um, uh, yeah, to establish your smartphone as your financial hub for everything. Yeah, so that you can do literally everything from inside the app. Actually, it's only founded um, in 2013. It started in 2015 with their app, and it already has over 200,000 customers, which is astonishing, actually. Um, it now also has its own European banking license. It's only, I think, half a year ago, and it announced not, not even one month ago that it's now available in 17 European countries. And they also claim that you can open a bank account in just eight minutes. As it turns out, you can lose it even faster. <laughs> okay, all right. Just like, to, let's talk briefly about transaction security in the number 26 app. If you want to do a transaction, you at first need to log in. This works with your user, username, in this case it's just your email address, and your password. This is pretty standard. Afterwards, you're good to initiate a transaction. After you entered all the details, you also have to supply a transfer code. This is just a four-digit number. Um, you use this also to withdraw cash. Probably you would call this PIN. Um, the last, um, last factor in this authentic authentication scheme is your paired phone. This is actually the most important security feature um, of the N26 account. And you can only um, pair one smartphone with your N26 account. 
That means, um, tech, from a technical perspective, the N26 app, the first time, the very first time you started, generates an RSA key pair and sends the public key to the N26 backend. And whenever you initiate a transaction, they are going to send an encrypted challenge to your smartphone and they, you send it back decrypted. That's how it works. Actually, repairing, that means pairing another phone, is a pretty well secured um, process, but we'll talk about this later. Just uh, to talk about like the infrastructure of N26. Basically, they have two apps, one for iOS, one for Android, and they communicate over a JSON-based protocol, um, TLS encrypted. The backend is at api.tech26.de. How do I know, actually, that this is a JSON-based protocol? Because I uh, used a TLS um, midterm attack, a man-in-the-middle attack, to learn the protocol. Um, I actually suspect that I only needed to install a certificate, a MIT proxy certificate on the client, but actually I was surprised that I didn't need to touch the client because they didn't implement any certificate pinning. So, <laughs> so that means um, it's the, the first thing that comes into mind is like, let's do real-time tr um, transaction manipulation. That means we manipulate a transaction that the user does, um, but we will change the recipient and the user won't see nothing about this. So if you look at this graphic again, um, what if an attacker could get the DNS record of api.tech26.de under his control? This would, um, would mean that all um, traffic is routed over the man in the middle um, attacker server and um, as there's no certificate pinning, we could just issue a let's encrypt um, TLS certificate and the app is going to trust um, the certificate. How does this work? Let's take, um, take an example here. Um, let's imagine I want to transfer two euro to my friend Dominic. After I entered all the transaction details, I have to enter my transfer code too. When I did this, um, I get like the second factor where you need the, um, the paired device and I need to confirm it. This is just like the next dialogue inside the app. After I confirmed it, the transaction went through, everything looks good, um, two euro less on my account, pretty good. In the next step, um, you, you can see in your transaction overview too that there are two euro less, but after the attack, when N26 realized that something wrong was going on and they fixed it, uh, you will realize that we actually transferred 20 euros not two, but this was completely transparent for the user even after the attack. Okay, this is nice. Yeah? We, can, we can manipulate a transaction real time, but wouldn't it be even better, in, more interesting to take over entire accounts to do our own transactions? Um, for this, we need the login credentials, the transfer code, and the paired phone. So we need to obtain all of them. Let's start with the login credentials. Actually, I want to assume to partly or mostly that the login uh, credentials are already compromised, but there are some weak points in the N26 transaction or in the security system of them that um, yeah, make it an easier task to obtain those login credentials. There are two things I want to talk about. There's the first thing is the recovery from loss procedure. When you forgot your password, N26, um, N26 just sends an email to your email account. There's a link inside, you click it and you can just reset the password. And this yeah, breaks the N26 password policy, which is actually pretty solid, um, because if you have access to the email account, you can we have automatically access to the N26 account too, and the access to the email account could be as bad as password or one, two, three, four, five, six. Another idea is spear phishing. Think of uh, spear phishing like a more targeted version of phishing. What you always need for phishing is a similar domain, something the user can relate to. And um, if you want to make spear phishing, you want to have it more targeted. That means you want to expose N26 customers to only send out mails to them and you need to have a valid reason to contact them. For about the domain, usually N26 uses number 26.de and uh, for password resets, for example, I think number 26.tech sounds pretty valid um, in my eyes. Only by chance I happen to own that domain. Yeah. <laughs> 
The next, um, next thing is exposing N26 customers. N26 offers peer-to-peer -peer transactions. That means if, you have, if your recipient also has an N26 account, those transactions are instant. To um, show the N26 customers who of his contacts actually have an N26 account, they upload all of the email addresses, all of the phone numbers in your address book to the N26 backend. Unhashed. Yeah. <laughs> but how can we use, but we actually want to use this to identify customers of a given data set. We can actually abuse this API for that. Do you remember the recent Dropbox um, leak that revealed 68 million accounts? We evaluated all of those 68 email accounts against this API, and N26 took no notice of this. There were no limits applied. They just think I'm really popular. Yeah? <laughs> Yeah, in the end, we revealed um, 33,000 um, N26 customers and could now send out um, emails to them. Actually, this also provides a valid reason to contact them. For example, um, the usual email of N26 looks somehow like this, yeah? So we could say to them, hey, you're affected by the Dropbox leak, um, please change your password for your own security. Actually, uh, and then, like, here, click this link to change your password, yeah? So. Now I can already see the grow, grow the N26 management board, um, yeah, nervous, but don't worry, we didn't do this. My professor had legal concerns. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, now that, um, that we have the login credentials, um, I, we have to wonder, can we actually already do something with those login credentials? And this brings me to Siri transactions. The, um, with iOS 10, N26 now supports transactions using Siri. That means now you can just say, send five euros to Dominic Meyer using N26, then the transaction pops up uh, and you can say, send it, and afterwards it's gone. The app doesn't even open. Yeah? So this already sounds wrong, but, uh, <laughs> but you can only do this with the paired device. If you, if you use another phone and just log in and try to use Siri with this, um, this dialog appears and you really have to open the app and yeah, have to confirm it with the paired phone. As it turns out, this is just a client feature. Yeah? So, they only <laughs> so what they do, this is actually the entire payload you need. You just, it's like five years, it's to Dominic Meyer, and that's the phone number. And look at, look at this API endpoint, transactions unverified. Yeah? So, yeah, okay, so it turns out you don't need the paired phone to do this, this type of transactions. Yet another thing that's interesting is that N26 claims that they have some intelligent algorithms to immediately detect irregularities and to prevent fraud before it even occurs. Yeah? So we thought, challenge accepted. Yeah? So, and what we actually did, and I think this is pretty irregular, uh, we sent 2,000 Siri transactions worth one cent within 30 minutes. Yeah? So, try to speak that fast. <laughs> okay. And so, what happened? Like, we waited the next day, the day after, and yeah, nobody actually um, made contact with us, and we thought they would never actually um, make contact. But over three weeks later, N26 required Dominic to explain the unusual amount of transactions. Okay, and they even threatened to cancel his account. I mean, this is actually, um, yeah, it's reasonable because it's, yeah, it's a clear misuse of the account and um, violates the terms of service of them. But Dominic didn't send those transactions, he received them. Yeah? <laughs> so they contacted the wrong person. Yeah? This is kind of like if, you, if Gmail cancels your account because you received spam. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's, let's go back to the account hijacking. And the next thing we need to obtain is the transfer code and get to control over the paired phone. 
Um, what we will do with the transfer code is we will try to reset it and um, the paired phone we have to unpair. Actually, those processes are not as independent as it seems, so I will right start um, with the paired phone. As I told in the beginning, unpairing is actually a highly secured process, and I mean in this really, this is my serious opinion. <laughs> um, so let's look at the process. At first, when you want to uh, pair a new phone, you, like I said, you need to unpair the existing one. Therefore, you open the app. Then you click at unpair, and afterwards, um, they send a link to your um, email account. Then, in the email, you need to follow the unpairing email, uh, the unpairing uh, link. In the next step, the real unpairing process starts, where you have to enter your transfer code first, then your MasterCard ID. This is something that's kind of special for N26. Like every N26 account comes with a MasterCard and they have printed a 10 digit numerical token below your name. Um, I don't know what this actually is. It's not the PAN, it's not the credit card number, but some other sort of token. So you need to have um, the MasterCard actually. And in the last step, they are going to send an SMS to you um, with a token and you have to enter it. And only after this process, the unpairing is done. So that means we need to have access to the email account. We need to know the transfer code. We need to have the MasterCard and we need to own the SIM card in order to receive the, receive the, uh, the token. You can't screw up each of those. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let, let's go into it. So the first thing. When you actually click on that, um, on that item in your app where it says start unpairing, it sends, this is basically a HTTP get request, but you wouldn't believe that they sent the link as a response. Yeah. So that you, it's not displayed, but it, it, it's there. Yeah. So you don't need to have access to the email account because it's in the response. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. Next thing, the transfer code. Um, I actually will skip this for the moment and we'll get right back to this. But the next thing is actually the master card ID. And yeah, this ID is printed on the card and we don't have access to, the, um, to that card. So what have, will we do? Um, in the transaction overview, N26 shows a lot of properties. For example, like the amount, the beneficiary, whatever. Yeah. So, and it turns out that this, <laughs> <laughs> that they used this MasterCard ID, and they thought, oh, this is actually a nice ID, let's use it as a prefix, yeah? So, again, this is not displayed to the user inside the app, but it's clearly there in the API. It's way too verbose, yeah? So. Okay. So, whenever um, they'll, they'll let the, the, the step that I just skipped was this transfer code. Um, the transfer code is unknown, yeah? so, but you can reset the transfer code. And it is, as it turns out, what you need to reset the transfer code is the MasterCard ID. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you need to enter those, this MasterCard ID that we just uh, that I just told how we will get it, and then we just will confirm uh, our new transfer code, think of one, I don't know, uh, any code, and therefore we don't know, uh, we don't need to know the transfer code, not even the old one, because it's not required, it, the MasterCard ID is sufficient. Then, um, the last step, SMS. The SIM card is inaccessible, we don't have access to that phone, um, but this is a five-digit token that they send out, and it's only numbers. I mean, this is 100,000 possibilities, yeah? And even for the login procedure, the login form has a brute force protection. This doesn't have any brute force protection. So, <laughs> so, so <laughs> the maximum that I could get out of the backend was 160 uh, requests per second. <laughs> so this means... <laughs> So 
So that means uh, that it takes, on average, um, yeah, approximately five minutes to get uh, this token. Yeah, so in the end, we will just brute force it, and that's it. Okay, let's... <laughs> let's look if this really works. Yeah? So, at first, we will log into the app, just to see that it's paired. Um, if it wouldn't be paired, uh, we would now like see a dialogue that we should pair our phone. So now, so it opens, great. And now we will start our script. And N26 claimed that this attack doesn't scale, just don't, don't blink. <laughs> so now th those are the logging credentials. <laughs> now we do do all the fun, and actually everything already happened, it's just the brute forcing that now takes place. And I have to admit that I have been really lucky this time, because we are done now. Yeah? <laughs> so <laughs> so um, like there are, this is the response, now the SMS numeric token is valid, and the phone has been successfully unpaired. So, okay, now let's verify in the app if this worked really. Yeah? So let's open it again. Okay. Touch ID expired, so this is actually good. That means that and something happened. Let's log in with our password. And there it prompts us for pairing the phone, so it worked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this. This, uh, uh, even before I said that this attack really scales very well, it has a drawback because um, free mails are sent out to the user. The first one when you actually start the unpairing, the second one when you uh, reset the transfer pin, and the third one when the unpairing is successful and the user also receives an SMS. But it, I, I mean fraud is perfectly possible, but is there a possibility to avoid this? So let's try to call the customer support. Yeah? Customer support is actually the most powerful entity in the N26 security model because they can even change things you can't change inside the app. For example, your email address or name you cannot change, yeah? but they can. Yeah? So let's talk with them. They can. It turns out that they can also unpair phones. Yeah? So now the question arises: Of course, you cannot just call there and say, "Hey, my name is Vincent. Please unpair my phone." Of course, they going to authenticate you. And what? <laughs> And what, what will they ask? They will ask for the MasterCard ID, you, uh, that we know that. The current account balance is always available if you have the login credentials. Okay, there's one thing that's still missing, place of birth. It's always the same, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's again, you can't see this information inside the app, yet yeah? it's just not displayed, yeah? but it's there. There's so much information you can't think of. Really, they know more about me than I do. Yeah? <laughs> okay, so now that means we have all information available and we can change any data, and the, the user won't receive any notice of that. Yeah? So no email, nothing. So we can just unpair the phone, and later we can pair our own one. Or like This is perfectly stealth. Now, actually, I heard already, ah, I only got 50 euros on my account, why should I care? Yeah. It, this is actually a valid argument because yeah, many N26 accounts um, are opened out of curiosity and many are inactive or not using it seriously. That means you only use it for traveling or paying things online because of the conditions, but you don't use it as a salary account, so there's frequently not so much money um, in it. But as this um, wants to be the financial hub for all services, you of course can also um, you apply for an overdraft. Yeah? And this is an instant overdraft that is granted during two minutes. And it's between, if you have guaranteed 50 euro and up to 2,000. Yeah? This requires the paired device. What did we just do? Uh, we have the paired device, we have the entire account. So what do we do? We will just um, hijack the account, then we apply for an overdraft, um, and then we will take all the money he has as a balance and as an overdraft. So even if you don't have money on your account and think you're safe, you are not. Uh, <laughs> 
Okay, this was, was quite a bit something. Um, I want to talk briefly about the disclosure before I will draw my conclusion. Um, I reported all these issues to N26 on September 25. I didn't establish the contact. Um, this was the CCC. Thank you for that. Um, I did this because I didn't know how N26 would react to this kind of vulnerabilities. Um, but actually, uh, there was no reason to think so because they acted really professional and um, yeah, they were actually thankful that I revealed these um, vulnerabilities. Yeah, then afterwards, um, they started to inter incrementally fix the issues. I don't know when they st uh, fixed the first thing. I didn't monitor the process. Um, but the last fix I know of happened on December 13 when they implemented certificate pinning on iOS. And apparently, I have to say that I didn't check everything, yeah, but apparently all issues are resolved. But what, what are the consequences out of this? It is obvious that N26 needs to put more emphasis on security. It's important to notice that this wasn't a coincidence. It simply wasn't. And N26 needs to understand that it's not enough to release videos with caption mobile first meets safety first and to claim that security is of paramount importance of them. So PR shouldn't do your security. And it's funny, if you, if you visit the N26 homepage, you will find out that they ha currently have 44 open positions. Not even one is dedicated to security. Eh? Furthermore, with such a strategy, FinTech squander the trust in financial institutions that banks established um, yeah, over years, actually. Today, you usually trust in your bank that they will deal with your money responsibly. And in the end, you also need to question authorities. I mean, uh, it was Bafin that, um, that granted a banking license to N26 only six months ago. And really, those vulnerabilities are inside for longer time. <laughs> OK. I think like um, a resume for this is they, you shouldn't say works for me when it's about security. Yeah. So. <laughs> So, thank you. Thank you, Vin. Thank you, Vincent. That was awesome and also kind of fucking scary. I. We only have a short time for questions. Is there anybody who has a question for Vincent? No, I guess everybody is out shh, deleting banking apps. <laughs> oh, number six. So, uh, quick question. Is the microphone on? Okay. Um, do you know whether they have disallowed those apps that have not yet been updated to still manage their bank account? So, for example, if someone has a mobile app that has not yet been uh, updated to the version that includes certificate pinning, would that person still be vulnerable to man-in-the-middle attacks? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So they actually, they, they don't have so much of an idea which device you are using. They don't even know which is the paired device. This is only a client value. Do two more to go here on number one. Yeah, hi, thanks for the talk. Did they actually invite you to help them or give your talk at number 26? Have they been in contact with you? Yeah, we, we have been in contact, and I also visited them and gave a workshop, so yeah, we did, they... <laughs> You're serious. I am serious, yes. <laughs> and we'll do one last one here from number five, please. So, during your talk, you name-dropped Let's Encrypt, and you kind of glossed over that bit about getting them to issue a certificate for their API host name. Do you know something I don't? <laughs> 
Uh, the question I get, I don't So you, you mentioned getting a Let's Encrypt certificate to impersonate their API host name because they weren't using certificate per pinning. How about, how did you go about doing that? Uh, but I didn't do this, like, was a, c a scenario. This, yeah, th that's at an attack scenario. Okay. I didn't, I, I didn't hijack the DNS record. Oh, okay, sorry. So <laughs> Thank you. All right, thanks everybody for joining. We can get a big round of applause here for Vincent.